the amazing thing about the work that the transgender district is doing that no one else is doing is working to create a thriving economic and cultural hub within a major metropolitan city for and by trans people and finding every way possible to make that happen. The act of setting up the trans district and, and getting it going at the beginning, you know, has had long lasting impact. This work is, I think, being heard around the world and being, you know, people are attempting to replicate it and people are feeling empowered by it. And even if they never step foot in the district, even just knowing that it's there, right? is um, such a powerful symbol for people and I think gives people hope. The cultural district was created in response to a massive development project that was coming into the Tenderloin that was threatening to really change the Tenderloin as we knew it and push out a lot of people, including and especially the trans community who had been in the Tenderloin for decades and decades and decades. We were seeing so much of our history erased, both again through gentrification, through the destruction of buildings, um, redevelopment. You know, there were more LGBT serving businesses down here in the Tenderloin along this strip than have ever existed in the Castro or Polk Street. It was huge and thriving. The Tenderloin became a bastion in San Francisco for folks who wanted to live their life the way they needed to outside of uh, laws telling them that they couldn't be who they wanted to be. There was a massive hotel that was knocking down, leveling a whole block in the Tenderloin that was on the corner of Turk and Taylor, which is probably two of the most important uh, has queer historical sites in the United States. It sucks that we have to sort of bend to the whims of this larger sort of like omnipresent institution because they have so much power and we don't. These non-LGBT people had made a deal to destroy and tear down our historic resources without engaging any of us in the dialogue. They were leveling an entire block of our history with no mitigations being done to preserve that history. Through that fight, we were able to win mitigations from the developer and that was the seed money that allowed us to create the Transgender District. When the opportunity came up, we actually started out going after a building, which was the Compton's Cafeteria building that is still there at 111 Taylor. There was no way that we could get that particular building. That's when we decided we'll ask for the district, really thinking about a one block radius, and we were very fortunate enough to get six block radius. So it felt important in that moment for the community to make a defensive move on behalf of this space that was, you know, one of very, very, very few safer spaces for, for trans folks in the city. And so if, if in a world where everyone just said yes, I think we would see transgender districts everywhere. And I think the hallmarks of a transgender district would be that you see transgender people and gender non-conforming people and non-binary people who are owning businesses and who are housed and housing that they love and is affirming and um, that we've sort of created our own economy, right? Sort of in the midst of a world that does not economically empower us, that does not proactively hire us or give us jobs or give us housing or, you know, affirm our identities or our authenticity as trans people. That's what a transgender district in a city would look like.